Hello to all my dear students. So today I am here with the yet next another amazing lecture of the chapter Organism and Population. So far we have discussed the attributes of population, the population growth and the concept of population density. Today we are going to cover the types of growth models under the heading population. So beta, there are two growth models. Number one is arithmetic growth model which is called as logistic growth model and the second is geometric growth model also known as exponential growth model so one by one we are going to discuss both the growth models and then we will switch to the last topic of the chapter which is population interaction so let's start without wasting any time okay so there are two types of growth curves which you have to study the first itself is geometric growth curve which is also known as exponential growth curve correct this growth curve basically does not exist in realistic condition this growth curve is only seen this type of excessive growth in population density is only seen when all the surrounding conditions for any organism is absolutely perfect absolutely perfect means when the amount of nutrients given to the organism when the environment given to the organism temperature everything is perfect and there is no competition prevailing between the existing organism then in that case any population any individual of a population will try to reproduce as much as possible equivalent to their biotic potential in that case the population is going to grow exponentially without any hindrance so what is exponential growth curve or geometric growth curve over here beta under unrealistic condition under unrealistic conditions what is going to happen unrealistic means what beta unrealistic i want to say when nutrients are abundant oxygen supply temperature everything is perfect there is no competition prevailing every individual in their habitat in their surrounding is absolutely very happy and satisfied so that is called as unrealistic condition because you know in nature all the resources are limited space is limited food is limited competition has to prevail and none of the individual can reproduce to their maximum capacity there is a concept of environmental resistance that applies to the growth of the population but under unrealistic condition all these things gets neglected correct so when unrealistic conditions like when the resources are abundant when resources are abundant and no competition prevails and no competition prevails among the organisms correct so when resources are abundant and no competition prevails such condition is known as unrealistic condition comma population is going to grow to their maximum limit see every population every individual has their own capacity to reproduce maximally which is known as biotic potential correct biotic means biology living organism potential means capacity capacity to reproduce right so under unrealistic conditions that means when all resources are abundant and no competition prevail population is going to grow maximally it is observed that under such situation population grows maximally right equivalent to its biotic capacity equivalent to the biotic potential of organism correct 
no environmental resistance is going to play role over here so next important point is no environmental resistance no environmental resistance prevails correct why why no environmental resistance because you have kept the condition unrealistic you have given abundant resources temperature oxygen food nutrient everything no competition is taking place then every individual will try to reproduce maximally which is equivalent to their biotic potential and now if i want to plot the graph of this geometric growth curve keeping x axis time and y axis population density then i am going to obtain a j shaped growth curve so let's add a page and now let's try to draw the graph of geometric growth curve keeping in time and population density under consideration so there will be a j shaped growth curve for geometric condition for exponential growth there will be a j shaped graph j means with the time population is simply increasing population badhti ja rahi hai there is no stoppage to this growing population as there is no environmental resistance there is no competition there is no catastrophic situation and there is abundant resources so organism will reproduce maximally increasing the population as much as possible producing a j shaped growth curve but on the other hand beta there is a proper growth curve which is realistic logistic called as arithmetic growth curve it is or the realistic one which actually prevails in nature so this is logistic growth curve this is more kind of a realistic growth curve how it is realistic growth curve because here the resources are not kept abundant resources are limited because of which there is competition prevailing among the individual and as a result they each individual cannot reproduce maximally they will not be able to increase their population as much as possible as environmental resistance is going to play role and will check and keep a check in the growing population apart from this i will introduce one more terminology which is carrying capacity denoted by symbol k beta carrying capacity is the capacity of the earth of the specific space to keep the number of individual in a happy space like for example there is a classroom in which only 50 students can be accommodated so the carrying capacity of the class is 50 now if you try to keep students more than 50 if suppose a teacher tries to fit, uh, fit 70 students in that 50 classroom student then what will happen will those extra 20 student will be able to sit in this in that class perfectly no there will be unbalanced situation there will be kind of you know dhakka mukki taking place among all the student in search of place and automatically the class will not be a proper one there will be lot of hustle and bustle going on due to excessive population sitting in a classroom which cannot support that excessive growth so carrying capacity is actually the total capacity of this earth to support individuals correct now suppose the if suppose any population tries to exceed the carrying capacity what will happen if suppose any species try to exceed the carrying capacity what will happen a catastrophic situation will come earth will either bring earthquakes or volcano eruptions or landslides or tsunamis and it will again bring the population back to normal correct so in case of arithmetic growth the resources are limited because of which 
population does not exceed the carrying capacity there is always environmental resistance playing role which is going to keep the check in the growth of the population correct so this is more realistic kind of it was explained by scientist verhulst pearl so it was explained by two people verhulst and pearl so it is called as verhulst pearl logistic growth curve it is more realistic what is carrying capacity the total capacity <clears throat> of the earth to support the individual now if n tries to exceed k now what is n n is the population density and what is k k is the carrying capacity right so what is n n is the population whereas k is the carrying capacity now if this situation occurs if n exceeds k then what will happen automatically the population is going to suffer resistance if this condition takes place then environmental resistance will occur environmental resistance will occur to once again make the population either equal to k or less than k to avoid any imbalance in nature this n is equal to k beta this is known as asymptote this is known as asymptote now so let's let's try to write down the details of this logistic growth curve it is a more this growth curve this growth curve so this growth curve is more realistic one is more realistic one where where what where resources are limited where resources are limited as a result there is a check whenever excessive population grows now let's try to plot the graph and try to understand now this is the this line which is going parallel to x axis is the carrying capacity this is the maximum population which can be supported by a given space so k represents the carrying capacity which shows maximum population that can be supported which can be supported correct now initially what happens population tries to grow correct somehow population exceeds the carrying capacity automatically there will be environmental resistance there will be catastrophic condition there will be some tsunami coming up because of which the excessive population growth will be brought to decline and then the value of n will become equal to k this is known as asymptote so this is known as asymptote where populated where population density is equivalent to carrying capacity and somehow the shape of the graph will become s shape that is sigmoid growth curve will be observed here environmental resistance is playing role the formula for environmental resistance is 
k माइनस एन अपॉन के राइट नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू राइट द इक्वेशन ऑफ बोथ जोमेट्रिक एंड एरिथमेटिक ग्रोथ कर्व टूगेदर हैंड इन हैंड सो बेटा फॉर जोमेट्रिक द ग्रोथ इज एक्सपोनेंशियल एंड नो एनवायरमेंटल रेजिस्टेंस इज प्लेइंग रोल सो डी एन इज इक्वल टू डी टी इज इक्वल टू आर एन वेर आर विल बी द ग्रोथ रेट दिस इक्वेशन कैन ऑल्सो बी रिटर्न इन एक्सपोनेंशियल फॉर्म एज एन टी इज इक्वल टू एल नॉट ई की पावर आर टी हाउ एवर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अरेथमेटिक ग्रोथ कर्व देन हेयर डी एन अपॉन डी टी आर एन तो ठीक है बट ओवर हेयर इन्वायरमेंटल रेजिस्टेंस इज गोइंग टू प्ले द रोल विच इज के माइनस एन अपॉन के सो दिस इक्वेशन इज फॉर लॉजिस्टिक पर्ल which is logistic verhulst pearl growth curve and these two equation are for geometric growth curve now this r stands for growth rate which is number of birth minus number of death so the equation this equation can also be written as dn upon dt is equal to b minus d into n so these three are the equations which is explaining you geometric growth curve right and this is the equation which is explaining arithmetic growth curve where environmental resistance is also taken into consideration as a result s shaped growth curve is obtained and over here j shaped growth curve is obtained understood everyone the two types of growth curve in population very good now the next topic is population interaction you know the two levels of ecosystem or the ecology are organism and population the third level is community now to make community beta different population should interact with themselves different population should interact with themselves to form community and different population interact via predation competition there are different kinds of interaction which we are going to study in this chapter so here i am going to write the list of the interactions that we are going to study one by one most important is mutualism then predation then commensalism i'll tell you about each and every with the help of example predation commensalism mutualism amensalism then coming your uh, parasitism and competition so these are the different interaction due to which different populations are interacting among themselves and leading to the formation of community now here is species a and species b here i'll just suppose in mutualism is a type of population interaction where two different species are going to interact with themselves and are going to give them benefit to aisa interaction jahan pe dono hi species ko barabar se fayda ho then that is known as mutualism both the species are getting equal benefit both the populations are getting equal benefit plus plus sign in pap predation one species is at benefit another is at loss commensalism one species will be at benefit another will be neutral amensalism one will be at loss another will be neutral parasitism plus minus competition is the only interaction where both the species interacting are at loss so here are the just symbols and the name of the interaction but now i am going to teach you in all interactions one by one in detail and will also share that why these symbols are given to these interaction first starting with mutualism mutualism is also known as symbiosis in this interaction beta when two different population when two different species 
they interact then they give each other equal amount of benefit when both the species are equally getting benefit in such a manner that if you remove one of the species then another species is automatically going to die such a do and die relationship is mutualism like you see in case of lichens you have studied about mycorrhiza so lichens and mycorrhiza are the best example to understand mutualism right chalo let's write this mutualism first of all it is also known as symbiosis now what happens in this beta in this type of interaction both the species are dono hi species ko both the species are getting equally benefits and if you remove one of the species another species in the absence of one species will not be able to survive in this type of interaction both the species are getting equally benefited such that such that if one species get eliminated if one species gets eliminated other the other will also get lost will also become extinct correct the best example to study is the plant and uh, yes plant and uh, fungi relationship there are two examples where plant and fungi are getting associated mutualistically one example you already know which is lichen where algae and fungi they they make a pact where they will live together and yes they will, will live happily and second is mycorrhiza where the roots of higher plants are weak they are unable to absorb water and mineral like pinus so fungus takes the shelter inside the roots of the pinus and absorb water mineral provided to the pinus so pinus is also happy fungus is also happy pinus is getting the water mineral absorbed in return fungus is getting the food and shelter so when both the species are equally benefiting each other now if suppose fungus gets lost it gets extinct pinus will automatically get extinct why because who will absorb water mineral for the pinus so this is kind of a relationship which is called as mutualistic association right so mycorrhiza is between roots of higher plants like pinus and fungi similarly you have also studied some more mutualistic association between plant and animal do you remember the first the second chapter which i taught you sexual reproduction in flowering plants when i was talking about pollination so beta plants depends upon animal for pollination and animal depends upon plant for laying eggs for food etc so then they form symbiotic association plant and animal relationship now plants beta they depend upon animal for pollination or seed dispersion in return animal depends upon plant either for food like they take the nectar they take the pollens for eating and also they depend upon plants for safe place to lay eggs correct safe place to lay eggs now beta 
what will happen the best example is fig and fig wasp relationship i hope you all are able to recall what has been taught to you in chapter 2 of class 12th sexual reproduction in flowering plants if yes that's well and good fig the inflorescence of fig is known as hypanthodium yes or no it has a special opening called ostiole so this hole is hypanthodium the inflorescence of the fig plant there is a fig wasp which is the only one to identify the opening this fig wasp will go inside the hypanthodium you know it will lay eggs and in return it will take the pollen grains to pollinate the plant so this is also one of the example of mutualism between plant and animal which is for pollination and safe place to lay eggs so all these concepts you have already done in sexual reproduction chapter so i will leave this topic over here just read it and revise it from the notes which i have given you in chapter number 2 moving towards the next type of interaction is commensalism commensalism mein beta kya hoga what will happen in commensalism it is basically a plus zero relationship that means if two species comes in contact then one species will be benefited and another will be neutral in the presence of the first species right so what is commensalism it is a plus zero relationship that means species a will take the benefit from species b but species b in the presence of species a will be neutral ek ko koi farak nahi pad raha hai presence absence se but dusri species ko zarur fayda mil raha hai so it's a kind of a plus zero relationship the best example to understand commensalism is barnacles there are some are smaller arthropods which grows on the back of whale so they are getting barnacles are getting the shelter but is whale affected by the growth of barnacle on the back no second clown fish it gets hidden inside the sea anemone sea anemone is a nidaria it is a cylindrate having tentacles so those big tentacles of uh, nidaria it hides this uh, clown fish so clown fish gets protected from the predator but tentacles and uh, you know this nidaria this uh, sea anemone is completely clueless it's okay if anybody came and took the shelter koi farak nahi padta so here you have seen one species is getting benefit but another is neutral in the presence of the first orchids growing on the branches of mango so all these are the example of commensalism first right orchids growing on mango branch now mango ko koi farak nahi pad raha simply orchid is just getting the shelter but mango tree is completely clueless second barnacles growing on the back of whale on the back of whale third sea anemone protecting clownfish with the help of its tentacles so all these are the examples of commensalism where this species over here suppose sea anemone is neutral but clownfish plus over here barnacle plus over here orchid plus otherwise whale mango and sea anemone are completely clueless they are neutral right so this is commensalism type of population interaction i hope you have understood both the types of growth curves as well as the two types of population interaction for this class i am going to keep it till here the remaining four or five interactions we will do in our next class right 
okay so it's time to say thank you thank you for joining me see you in the next lecture with more population interactions and yes it will the upcoming lecture on this chapter will be the final lecture hope you all enjoyed this thank you for watching me see you in the next lecture bye bye everyone take care